play announcer joining us tonight from the road in Houston. And Kawhi uh, expected to play after missing four straight due to rest slash load management, which is a phrase we've all enjoyed. Uh, Ford a row has raised some eyebrows. He says he's not hurt. Is there any evidence to suggest this is anything more than what he and the team say it is? At this point, Matt, uh, I, I think it's simply just the load management and there's no cause for any major concern. That said, uh, it was about a week and a half ago, uh, almost two weeks ago, where Kawhi did get banged up in the game uh, where the Raptors ended up going to overtime against the Washington Wizards. And he went back to the locker room in between the third and fourth quarter and had his left leg looked at. And he was noticeably uh, moving a little bit slower on the floor. He seemed to be affected by something. That said, though, he came back a couple of nights later and played in the game against Boston uh, and didn't seem to be showing any ill effects of that injury that plagued him for a little bit of that game against the Wizards. But that was the last time we saw him. He missed four games after that Celtics game. So I do believe there was a little bit of maybe some bumps and bruises for Kawhi dealing with whatever was happening with that left leg. But he said this morning at shoot-around he's good to go. He's ready to go. He's, he's looking forward to being back in the lineup. And Nick Nurse just told us here uh, less than an hour ago at the arena uh, that there will be no minute restriction. And, and Kawhi is, uh, the, the you know, sort of unleashed, I suppose, uh, for James Harden tonight. And obviously, Eric, any decisions about minutes or games played will all be made with an eye toward the postseason. But the reality is the Raptors, actually have a better record in terms of percentage without Kawhi this season, 11 and 3. What's allowed them to play even better without their best player on the floor? You know, it's interesting you say that, Matt, because we've talked about that quite a bit as well, the, the, the difference between the Raptors without Kyle Lowry versus the difference without Kawhi Leonard. And I think when, and, and I'll just a quick side note to that, the Raptors have yet to have a game this season where they've missed both of those players. One of Kyle or Kawhi has played in every game this year. And I think the big thing is, is when uh, Kawhi is out of the lineup, there is more, uh, I think, unselfishness from the team overall in terms of moving the ball, looking to make that extra pass. And listen, they're still obviously having a heck of a season. The, the, the record is what it is. The win total is there. But at times, I think the Raptors can be a little bit guilty of, you know, kind of going ISO a little bit too much and maybe relying on Kawhi uh, a, a little bit more often than perhaps they need to or they maybe should be doing in terms of maybe looking to move that much more and, and get guys more involved, whether it be Danny Green from the perimeter or Fred Van Vliet or obviously Kyle Lowry looking for a shot, that, that type of thing. So I think at times when Kawhi is in there, some, sometimes guys can turn out to be spectators and not be as involved as perhaps they need to be. Eric, they've established themselves so far, obviously under Nick Nurse and with Kawhi in the mix. What, where do they go next? What's the, the next step in terms of the evolution of this team this season in particular? You know, I, I think the big thing is trying to find that, that, that killer mentality. And, and when I say that, it's trying to put opponents away. I, I, I'll kind of reference it again. The record is what it is, but I think for a team that has been as good as Toronto's been and, and sitting in first place overall in the, in the league for, for much of the season, they still don't seem to have that mentality at times, not every game, but at times where they can really truly put an opponent away. I think they are guilty at times of allowing teams to come back against them and, and maybe really only turning things on third quarter, fourth quarter, and sort of waking up and realizing, okay, now we've got to deliver that punch. I think that's maybe where the evolution is. And I think also in fourth quarter, you know, close game situations, it's trying to find uh, the ultimate consistency in crunch time down the stretch and, and who's your go-to guy. Uh, I don't think it has to be Kawhi Leonard every time. I don't think it has to be Kyle Lauer. We saw Pascal Siakam recently with the, you know, with the, with the buzzer beating uh, bucket against Phoenix as well. I think it's just trying to find that consistency on a consistent basis for this team, especially as you try to roll towards the postseason and want to be that type of squad that, you know, is, is looking to strike fear in everybody uh, in any game that you go into. Going back to the load management question with Kawhi, because four games in a row is a lot for a player that's supposed to be healthy. Is this something that Toronto is doing from a front office standpoint to show Kawhi, hey, man, you need to re-sign with us because we really care about your health? Because, you know, coming from the Spurs organization, there were some questions about what was really going on there with all that. You know, Brendan, this morning uh, Kawhi opened up for the first time, I, I say all season, about the load management and one of the comments he made, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he essentially said that we have spoken together and we've decided. So there's no denying that this is a joint conversation, whether it's Kawhi or Kawhi and his people, along with the Raptors and the medical staff. But one of the points that Kawhi made and the, 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 the Raptors coaching and medical staff has also made clear is they have sat down already and, and sort of earmarked 
points in the schedule uh, where they feel would be good times for Kawhi to rest. Uh, so it's it, it, to me, based on what we've been told, and, and heck, even even us, uh, you know, with the with the broadcast crew, we haven't been privy to some of the information or some of the decisions. But from what we've been able to kind of piece together and been told, it's that there are going to be stretches where Kawhi is going to simply just sit down and he's going to rest, and it's not just going to be on back to backs. And you know, I don't think that the Raptors are going to come outright and say, well, it's because they're playing opponent X and not opponent Y, and we feel we can beat this team without Kawhi. I think it's more just looking at days off, combined days off, when you think of practice days and off days and, and, and those stretches in the schedule where you could get uh, an extended rest for Kawhi. Uh, and I think that's going to continue on uh, right through until, you know, a couple weeks from now, the All-Star break, and even afterwards. I don't see this slowing down. I think the, the end game is still making sure that he is in top shape by the time the playoffs roll around, when, of course, we know no back-to-backs in the postseason. Raptors lead the league in wins. Kawhi's an all-star. It's hard to argue with the results so far for Toronto. Eric Smith with us, the Raptors play-by-play man on radio. Appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, guys, what what did you make of this? Because we kind of talked about this uh, before we came on the air tonight. Uh, Not playing back-to-backs is one thing. That's sort of standard for guys coming off injury, at least to a certain point in the season. Four straight games to rest? I mean, that's unusual. Yeah, four games in a row when you're supposedly healthy is a little bit odd. And that was one of the things that really uh, caught my attention. Um, you start wondering, hey, is this uh, did the quad re injured the quad? Is the team being overly cautious? Are they trying to prove something to him from a free agent standpoint? Hey, we, we love you. We're going to take care of you in a way that the Spurs didn't. So come back and re-sign with us. I don't really know what's going on because I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen a player, a superstar, healthy and not play for four straight games. So I don't really know what to make of it. Hopefully we see more of Kawhi on the court because he's one of the best players in this league. But I don't want to see Toronto get cute, too cute. I know they are 11-3 and three when Kawhi's been out. But you don't want to get too cute and start sitting him some games and lose games going down the stretch because this team hasn't proven that home court isn't uh, important to them in the playoffs. They need to get home court throughout the playoffs because they have some players that have had some uh, some unfortunate times, some unfortunate <laughs> memories. So they need their home court. They need that Toronto crowd. They need Drake. They need the whole six behind them <laughs> when we're talking about playoff basketball. So I don't want to see Messiah and the Toronto management get too cute and start sitting Kawhi to where it costs them games. Yeah, I, I think a lot of this is exactly Exactly what we see though look at the record that they've accumulated without Kawhi so you're not in panic mode if you're the Raptors if he needs a break right and coming off a season where there was all that mystery about the injury you know how serious was that quad injury everybody remembers what Tony Parker had to say about it if you're Kawhi Leonard and your body tells you you need a rest or the medical staff says take a break you take a break you cannot afford to finish this season with Kawhi Leonard anywhere but on the floor in uniform. And I keep harping on this for everybody. Come playoff time, the back-to-backs and and the management of the schedule is out the window. I don't know. Plenty of time. So if it's about getting to that point and having guys fresh and in a rhythm, they're fine. This is not something to worry about, but I agree with you. It can't hurt your cause if you're Toronto to make sure you let Kawhi know, hey, whatever you need. Right. We got you, big fella. We got you, baby. We got you. We got you. Uh, after, after such a weird, weird season in San Antonio last year. So tonight, Kawhi presumably will spend a lot of time against the beard, really for the first time since the playoffs in 2017 when Kawhi was still a San Antonio Spur. What can he do, two-time defensive player of the year? What can he do that other folks have not been able to do against Go him? back and look at his matchups with James Harden in the past. It's, this is the, the prototypical defender for a guy who really – can attack basically anybody. You're talking about a guy with the, the length, the you know, the footwork, the athleticism, strength, the skill level, and the strength to combat James Harden every step of the way on the floor. The, uh, the flip side of this now that maybe wasn't a part of their matchups in San Antonio is that Kawhi is every bit as dangerous on the other end of the floor now. So if James Harden is going to try and attempt to play any defense whatsoever on a player of, of equal talent, then this is his opportunity to show us that he's more than just an offensive machine because Kawhi's going to go right back at him, B. Wood, on the other end of the floor. Yeah, I think from a defensive standpoint, Kawhi's going to – I'm not going to say give James problems because we've already talked about how high the usage rate is, how how many shots he's going to get. You're not going to shut down somebody that can take – 35, 40 shots on a given night. James might take 17, 18 threes tonight. And you only have to hit, you can hit a poor percentage of those shots and still have a good night. So I don't, I'm not going to say that Kawhi is going to shut James down, but I do think he can slow him down, make him less efficient, but look for 
the Houston Rockets to set a lot of screens, and they're going to want the Toronto Raptors to switch those screens to get lesser defenders on James Harden. If I'm if I'm if I'm Toronto though, I'm not going to do a lot. Hey, I'm not going to do a lot of switching. I'm going to go ahead and try to show and get back, do whatever, force James to either go against uh, Kawhi or give the ball up. I'm not going to allow them. I'm not going to give them the easy way out of switching screens. I like that they have two guys too with an extensive experience in Danny Green and Kawhi you know, dealing with James yeah, on, a, right. on a regular basis. When you're a Raptors team where you only see him <clears throat> twice a season, you don't – it's not like preparing for a guy that you know you're going to deal with on multiple occasions. So I do like that matchup for the Raptors in terms of having two really good individual defenders that you can assign to, to kind of bird dog James and Harden. And maybe not just two. They've got a bunch of switchable guys on the wing uh, in Toronto. Good defensive team. That's an interesting matchup tonight uh, about to start in Houston as the Raptors.